I would like to take you into my world. Picture a busy city with millions of people, 20 million people struggling to get to their jobs, with 1.7 million cars that are creating fumes, heat, honking, people who are struggling to get to their jobs, sweaty, in a hurry, and all of this under a gray sheet of soot that is caused by the burning of garbage and rice straw that creates this blanket that swallows the city. This is my city. This is Cairo. But if you look closer, you might catch a glimpse of a gecko that is attached to the wall using Van der Waal for forces, or a bat that is ridding the night sky of the thousands of insects, or a willow tree that is majestically shading over the Nile while filtering its waters. I was first introduced to the magical world of the Nile when I was 18 years old, and I started drawing on the powerful yet refreshing waters of the River Nile. And I began to realize that there's a whole world. Kingfishers shooting into the water to catch their prey, and on the banks of the river are tall reeds of papyrus whose leaves are fluttering in the wind. And on the riverbed are catfish that are sifting through the soil for food. And I quickly began to realize that there's a whole natural world that I could learn and take inspiration from. <laughs> Now, little did I know that halfway across the globe, in Montana, USA, a group of scientists, of which Ginger just mentioned one, Janine Benyus, were pioneering in setting the foundation in a new field called biomimicry which is using nature as inspiration for sustainable design. As humans, we have been using nature as inspiration for thousands of years. It's not a new concept. Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine was inspired by the wings of birds, or his helicopter designs were inspired by seed pods. And even in our own Arab tradition, Abbas ibn Firnas, who was an inventor in many fields, also looked at the wings of birds for his flying devices. However, many of these inventions only looked at nature accidentally. Imagine the power of using elements of nature consciously for a better design. This is biomimicry, conscious emulation of nature's genius for sustainable design. Biomimicry is popular in the field of pro product design, such things as band-aids that are inspired by geckos' feet, band-aids that attach so strongly yet can easily peel off. But this is just the beginning. Biomimicry is based on six guiding principles, called life principles, most of which can be illustrated using a small animal that most of us have never seen, the Namib beetle. The small, black-colored beetle that is half the size of my thumb lives in the arid deserts of Namibia and is able to harness the scarce water that is found in dew. The beetle walks up a dune at dawn, raises its wings, and because it has these microscopic bumps on its back with parts that are able to attract water, It is able to capture water out of thin air and channel it down its back so that it can drink, which illustrates the first life principle of being locally attuned and responsive. And it does so because of the outer structure, the outer surface, the structure of it. And it also illustrates the second life principle, which is being resource and energy efficient. Now, this beetle, um, also has many different strategies so that it can survive in this desert. It can capture water, it can radiate heat, reflect sunlight, all strategies which show that it is um, adapting to changing conditions. Again, this beetle illustrates the fourth life principle, 
that nature evolves to survive. Like most organisms, the beetle has evolved over millions of years. With the beetles that had the microscopic bumps that were able to attract water, they survived. Now, as a result of all these strategies, inventors have started to look at the beetle to create new innovations,、um, such as the groundbreaking technology of using salt water for growing crops, called seawater greenhouse. Now, to illustrate the last two of the six principles, I am going to use an example of a system that most of us are familiar with: coral reefs. These are complex, sturdy, and elaborate systems. Coral reefs are made out of tiny animals called polyps, and they use the readily available uh, elements um, such as carbon, oxygen, and calcium to create really tough structures that are like cement, and yet have been formed in the ocean at ambient temperature and pressure. And this illustrates the fifth life principle. That nature uses life-friendly chemistry, as it also does not produce any toxicity to its surrounding environment, and uses the readily available energy, sunlight, to produce the structure. Corals also illustrate the last life principle: that nature integrates development with growth. The structure of corals is replicated, and over thousands of years creates this dynamic ecosystem. That is home to many marine organisms. A Spanish cement company has taken inspiration from how corals are formed and has created a new type of cement. Yet another example of how nature is inspiration. Now, these are just a few examples of how we can use nature as inspiration for sustainable design. I now invite you to use your senses. And your imagination, and to see just how close the natural world is to all of us, and let nature be our guide to create one planet living. So I invite you to close your eyes and to hold your hand with the other hand. I want you to feel the surface of your skin. Is it smooth, or is it rough? Are some parts more bumpy than others, and if so, why is it this way? Is there any moisture on your hand? And if there is, where did this moisture come from? How did the surface allow it to come through? What if I soaked this hand in water? What would happen to it, to its structure, to its surface? Now open your eyes. And look at your hand. Look at the shape of your hand. Why is it shaped this way? Why are my fingers shaped this way? How about the thumb? Can I touch my th- fingers to my thumb? Now, did you know that this precision grip is what has enabled humans to create such intricate tools? Now, most of us never look at our hands so intensely. And yet, this hand, like many other parts of organisms, has been an inspiration to scientists, engineers, and business people, who are now looking at nature for inspiration for a better design. The hand is a very complex part of our body. It has many functions, such as sensing, gripping, moving. The skin on the surface. Is made out of a keratin structure that is woven together in this 3D pattern, that gives the hand flexibility and allows it to act as a sponge, so that it can expand to retain more water when it is soaked. Now, this shape and characteristic of the hand has been an inspiration to creating new waterproof packaging materials that also can retain water to. Gain stability and release it when the material is empty. As humans, we have just begun discovering the millions of strategies, processes, and systems that exist in the natural world. So let nature be our guide, and let us tune our antennas and listen to what she has to say. 
الطبيعة مليانة حكاوي يلا نسمع لها <تصفيق> 